Oké. Okay. Uh, ik heb geen, geen tijd meer. Oh, okay. Ja, dat moet ik. Dat, 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 nee, maar dat u het weet. Dat nu, komt wel. Uh, ja. Ik zat al. Ah. Maar ik heb Grace gegeven twee uur. Hè. Pas aan het eind van het college sluit het echt. Oh, okay. dus, en dan ga ik ja. ook mededelen, want uh, ik ga het ook uitleggen waarom. 
ja. Even kijken. Uh, even kijken. Okay, welcome class uh, to Multibody Dynamics B, um, lecture number one. So real content today, but first I have to make a, an announcement or to... Uh, 
Uh, uh, I can do this. I can do this. Yes. Okay. I'm gonna not gonna repeat. I'm not gonna repeat. I'm not gonna repeat. Okay. Um, okay. The announcement. Oh yeah, the announcement. 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 I'm stupid. I have to be frank. Yeah. I confess, I'm really stupid. Uh, I, I have like an excuse. Um, s well, some of you noticed my stupidity is that uh, the deadline for the homework, which I'm very strict on the deadline, was just an hour off. It was an hour too early. Like, oh, panic, what is going on? Well, uh, I'm stupid, that's the, that's the reason. Uh, my excuse is that uh, uh, I was on Finnish time. Everything was Finnish and uh, the Finns have a tendency to be a bit earlier. So they also close a bit earlier, uh, one hour. So there's one hour difference and uh, I just didn't pay any attention to that. I was on the same, on, on, the, on the wrong time schedule. So I'm not, we're now back on the right time schedule. Uh, for those who are, uh, have not submitted or had trouble, there is a grace period. Uh, I, I keep the, the, uh, the thing open until the end of the lecture. So those who watch in the live stream, please, uh, apologies, but you can still submit homework or, or you in the audience, if you have to have new insights, then you can still update your homework zero and update it until a quarter to four. Uh, why a quarter to four, I don't know. And then uh, at a quarter to four, the, the the solutions will be opened. They are not open yet, right? which makes sense. Right? Okay. Um, that having said, what are we going to do? So today is lecture one. We're going to uh, contents. Uh, we're going to talk about three po body diagrams, Newton order equation of motion. I'm going to give you the tools by which you can solve any system. So after today, you're sort of done. Like, okay, if this is it, I, I know what to do. The rest of all the lectures are technicalities and details. But today is an important thing. Today we're going to fill your toolkit with the stuff where you think, okay, this is what I need. My basic tools. Uh, it's connected with chapter 11 in the book. Uh, does anybody have a problem with obtaining the book? Can I see hands for that? No hands, good. Um, but before we talk about this, we're going to do What are we going to do the first lecture, the first quarter? Kahoot, yeah. Kahoot. Oh, this is, I think, the most funny, nice thing. Okay, Kahoot. Okay, back. Yeah, that's correct. Okay, let's play, right? Is this play? Uh, yeah. Uh, the contents of the Kahoot is, of course, not about the, the lectures today. Yeah, maybe one question, but most of it is, of course, on your past performance, right? So all your knowledge which you gained during the Bachelor to, uh, with uh, Heike, with Advanced Dynamics Part 1, uh, the Kahoot is about that to check, so it's a really a feedback instrument to check, oh, am I up to knowledge or are there still holes in my brain? Oh yeah, now I have to watch, right, for 30 players. Oh, uh, by the way, wh while you are logging in, this is a nice moment to say that if you are not uh, registered in Brightspace for the course, I'm of course not able to put your Kahoot result in Brightspace because you do not exist in Brightspace. And from last week, I think I found 19 students who did uh, participate in Kahoot but did not exist in Brightspace. So for those who still do not exist in this course, please sign up. Oh yeah, now I have to check if there are, <coughs> what type of people are here. 
Mm -hmm. Actually, I'm also surprised by the big audience in the room. I mean, it's flattering, but uh, I, I, I was hoping to, ha to have like this hardcore part. <laughs> well, we'll see. No critique, eh? it's, it's okay, it's okay. Okay, uh, yeah, now this is like an exponential thing. Yeah, almost. Okay, let's go. Five questions. Are you ready? This is about free body diagrams. Which is correct? And you have 90 seconds, so more than enough time. Take your time to look at it. Uh, discuss with your partners, friends, neighbors. Uh, note that there are can be more than one answer correct. There should be one, co at least one correct answer. People in the live stream, get ready, please. Three seconds to go. Yeah. Uh, you could say that uh, Heike did a pretty good job, right? Yeah. You could say that uh, Heike did a pretty good job uh, with her course. Uh, you all know about the free body diagram. For uh, the, the, the red ones, uh, there are two red ones. Uh, what is about the red one? Well, you, you never put like these d'Alembert type of forces in a, in a, you only do the really the applied forces and the, the cut force or the constraint forces. So uh, that's, that's why two is not correct. What is about the 20 through in the, I, what is this color? I don't know, what, how do you call it? Yellow, yellow? okay. Uh, this yellow one, um, what was the yellow actually? C. So what is, oh yeah, what is wrong in C? No, that we said that there is no friction drag or whatsoever, so there can be not there cannot be a torque in the in the in the <laughs> rotational joints, right? Okie dokie. Uh, yeah, good result, good class. BVR, are you in the room? Eternal. No. The tensile force in the rope is. Always good to discuss with your neighbor. You are right, he is wrong. Live stream, get ready. Four, three, two, one.
Very good. Okay, some feedback on the incorrect answers. Um, I learned from Heike in advanced dynamics that the first check you should do is about uh, dimensions. Uh, are the dimensions correct? And and especially in this uh, these uh, multiple choice question, uh, you can already delete a, a lot of op uh, options because the dimensions just don't fit. So uh, what should the dimension be? So it should be uh, a force, right? So that's a kilogram meter uh, uh, divided by second squared. And then if you uh, well, if you look at this type of answer, uh, that can't be right, like that's kilogram divided by meter, so forget it, uh, don't read the rest. Um, here this is like a speed, so this is mass times speed squared, Could that's something with energy maybe, or I don't know, it, it's not, not a force. Uh, what is this? Yeah, likewise, that's even worse than that. So, based only on a dimensional analysis, you could say, oh, that then blue should be the correct answer. without any knowledge about uh, centrifugal or centripetal or, or whatever petal, right? Okay. BVR, I, oh no, it wasn't in the room. Uh, then, the equation of motion in X is... Yeah, I will try to enlarge the figures. I, 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 I don't know what's going on here. You have more than enough time. Just write down the equation of motion. Make a free body diagram. Don't write in the air. Write on paper. Okay, very good. Uh, I don't think I have to address all the other un wrong answers. It's, it's a, a tiny amount and it's super clear wh why uh, 170 people have it correct. I'm not going to talk about it. Clear. Okay, next one. The mass moments of inertia are...
Okay. Uh, uh, yeah, there's, there's still a big portion who have it wrong, right? Uh, of course, uh, you have to refresh it from memory. Um, but again, uh, be because it's multiple choice, you can rule out a, a number of items already directly. Um, so let's let's look at the figure again. So I'm asking about mass moment of inertia about principle about the three axes, major axes. Well, uh, mass moment of inertia was mass times distance squared, right? And uh, it's a quantity like mass which is just can add up. So if there are like three balls, then it's at a certain distance at three times that thing. Now. If the distance is large, then the mass moment of inertia will be large. So let's try and find out what, what axis will have the largest mass moment of inertia. That should be a one where the distances of the balls are f the farthest away, right? So the x-axis has 1 and 3, the y-axis has 2 and 3, and the z-axis has 1 and 2. So my bet would be that the middle axis, the y-axis, should have the largest mass moment of inertia. Okay, so that having said, let's look at our answers. Uh, red can't be true. Uh, uh, yellow can't be true. So it is either this or that. Well, you e the green one you can even discard immediately because that too, I mean, that, that won't, won't work, right? But you can also do a quick calculation. Like for instance, we were focusing on the Z, so le let's focus on the Z, on the Y again. So it's distance squared, so that's uh, uh, this 2 squared is 4, and uh, 3 squared is 9, and 4 plus 9 is um, another number, 13, uh, times 2, because we have two of these things, and then we come to 26, right? Okie dokie. Uh, the last one. The rotation matrix. Oh, bugger all. If you have the book with you, it's like a lookup question. How do I do that? I have no clue how I do that. Sorry? Oh, yeah. You're welcome. Okay, live stream. Yeah, okay, that's done. Yeah. I would say uh, look up chapter before 11, somewhere in the middle of the first part, <laughs> is that part on rotation matrices. But to be frank, uh, in this in this lecture series, after the, uh, what is it, spring break, yeah, uh, we will talk again about rotation matrices. Because uh, rotation in space is uh, ooh, it's very weird. It's very weird things are going on. And it also has to do with that, that you can with hair on a ball that you cannot comb it in in one direction there's always like a spot where the hairs go in all direction you cannot say oh let's put all my hair into one direction that, that doesn't work there's always a spot which it's a hairy ball theorem so if you're interested in the hairy ball theorem and it's not hairy with a double r but it's a hairy with a hairy thing then uh, please come to the second set of lectures after the spring break. Okay, so what is going on here? Um, a short, very concise description. So we have to transform from a body uh, fixed frame to a inner, the, uh, space or inertial fixed frame. So, and these cans are in series, so 
actually, if you have a vector expressed in this system, you have to walk backwards through this system, right? Now, in this expression, the vector in the body fix is on the right-hand side. So if you have to walk backwards to, to your result, you have to walk in that direction. And if you walk in that direction, the, which, which can do you first see? Yeah, it's the, the C can. And then you see the B can, and then you see the A can. And that's a, in, a, a, in, a, in a four sentences the explanation. If you want to know more, read the book, right? And come to after this break. break. OK, next. Um, yeah. W is the winner in the room? Nee. Yo! Oké. Okay. Uh, please give feedback. Get feedback, ja. Yeah. And now I'm going to save it. Direct. Come on, ja. Yeah. Enter the drive. Oké, okay, save. Okay, I have saved everything and I have to show the thing. Feelings. Uh, leave, count, we can leave, we leave it like this. Okay, um, contents of today, free body diagram and Newton order equations. So um, let's, let's, let's dissect the title, right? Uh, Newton, Euler, equations of motion, they, they <coughs> sort of go together. Let's first start with the Newton part. So Newton. Uh, what do we know about Newton? Well, we know that uh, finally he, he came down with an equation like the sum of the forces equals the mass times the, yeah, you would say acceleration, but I have a preference for saying the change of speed. Because in a nutshell, that is what he uh, invented. Eh? If you, so thi this is the equation, eh? the, the famous uh, Newton equation for, and then this, This quantity, eh, change of speed, is something he invented, actually. Eh? This whole calculus of differentiation, together with Leibniz, of course, well, they did it separately. And uh, he came to the conclusion that uh, a force only changes the motion. So if there's no force, then the motion just persists, right? Okay. Um, in those days, the concept of mass, who invented the idea of mass? Uh, we can get back to your problem. We can get back. Just pay, pay attention now. It will, it will come. Everything will be okay. Trust me, I'm a doctor. It will work. Um, so all the things he, he, he uh, what, what are, let, let's dissect the whole equation, right? Because you can write it down and say, oh yeah, that's Newton equation. But let's try and understand what is there. So what is, I see an equation. So on the right hand side, I see a thing called mass. Who invented the concept of mass? He had a hunch. Who came with the definition of mass? Take a wild guess. <coughs> Newton, yeah. Yeah, very good. <laughs> Smart audience. <laughs> Newton. So, OK. So he, who came up with the idea of uh, fluxione or derivatives eh, or differentials? <laughs> Newton, right? Okay. okay. Uh, uh, leaves one set of symbols, forces. Who came up with the concept of forces? Newton. Yes, <laughs> Newton. Well, actually, that's not a fair game, right? You just cook up three things, which you just define yourself, and then you make an equation for that. I can do that. However, it's of course connected with 
the things which happen around us, right? And so for, for what, what purpose was he writing down his equations? This is about point masses, right? Yeah, so we should say that that's for a point mass. It's, it's not a rigid body yet. Uh, what point masses was he thinking of? Yeah, you would think apples, eh? Uh, no, wrong. Sorry. <coughs> wrong answer. What were his point masses? Peas? Yeah, green peas. The, the British tend to eat green peas, indeed. But uh, maybe he did. Other point masses? <coughs> yeah, very good. So we have the sun here. And we have Earth. Uh, note the dimensions are not correct. <laughs> and around <laughs> Earth, well, yeah. It's actually a nice challenge to, uh, to draw it on scale. You need paper like in the room like this, and then you have a small blob, and uh, it's pretty cool. But OK. So we have the Sun, we have the Earth and the Moon, and everything is rotating about each other. And it's uh, super complex. And we have no clue how it works. Well, he had an idea. and. Um, so there is some distance eh, uh, between these objects. And then there is some magical force. And, and so one attracts the other, and the other attracts the one. So th th there's a force between them, and that's equal and opposite in sign, um, which is, by the way, also a Newtonian law. <coughs> eh, that if I am attracted to you, then you are attracted to me in a gravitational sense. <laughs> yeah. So um, uh, if, you, uh, if those bodies interact, then the, the forces are equal but, but opposite in sign. Uh, what I is it his second law or uh, something like that? And then his, or his first law. I, 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 I get uh, also confused with the number. That's one of the laws. And then what does he, he, he discover? He discovers the following thing. He said, well, the forces which they they uh, act upon each other, have are, ha are sort of linear, have to do with the mass, and they are uh, inverse proportional with the distance squared. And, and that is the force. And if I use that model of force, then I can show with, with this law that uh, uh, you get elliptic motions. So in that sense, actually Newton was not smart, he was super smart. In what he did, he didn't put this, this law into the equation, no way. He put a ellip, ellipse type of uh, path and then differentiated twice because differentiation was his thing, right? That's what he discovered. And then he differentiated that twice, that path, that elliptic path. And then he noted that, oh, the force, force which does that is this type of force. Now, why did he say elliptic uh, orbits? Well, that was just a lucky guess, I guess. They knew it was sort of a circle, but not exactly a circle. And then, so the next step to a circle is that you have two focus points instead of one focus point, and that's an ellipsoid. And why it all works, I have no clue either. It's sort of magic. I, I always wonder, why is it not to the power 2.31856? Why is it just 2? <coughs> I don't know. It's it's actually it's super strange and magic. Anyway, uh, so this, these laws uh, uh, hold uh, for point masses, and 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 uh, we shoot rockets to the moon, and and we do orbits, we do all kind of funny things with that. Of course, if you go a little bit faster than than normal, then things get weary and strange. What happens then? So this is for moderate speeds, eh? for, for the speed is very low with comparison to the speed of light. And, and the speed of light, uh, what is the speed of light approximately? <laughs> oh, super fast, right? Uh, I have a number here and I have no idea. They say it's this, but I never checked. This is an 8, by the way. So 3 to the times 10 to the power 8, so 300 million, or you do, can do kilometers or whatever, per second. So very fast. And then when it's the speed of light, you get these, these correction factors, uh, V over C and so on, and, and S squared. Uh, 
uh, who did that, who came up with that theory? Um, Albert, eh? yeah, Albert Einstein, yeah. But uh, w we're not doing this in this class. This is uh, immaterial. Eh? We, we, we uh, still have a moderate speed, and, and uh, especially I have a moderate speed. Okay, uh, so that was the first part, Newton. We know everything. Point masses, that's the law. This is the, uh, uh, the, the forces. Uh, which act on it, and um, well, you, then you can, can calculate anything. Next part, Euler. Why, uh, where does Euler come into play? What did Euler do? Rotation. <coughs> Rotation, yeah. Euler did a lot. He did so much that I'm still baffled by wh what he all came up with. I mean, you can, you can think of any sentence where you can put in Euler. And, and um, in this lecture, almost every week his name pops up. And not on the same thing, but always on another thing. Like uh, the Euler angles, or Euler numerical integration step, or, uh, well, you, you can think, or um, the Euler formula for complex numbers. Euler is everywhere. He's among no, really, he's everywhere among us. So uh, he's omnipotent in that sense. He also worked very hard. Um, next, next, uh, is it, there's not a picture in the book of him. No, there cannot be a picture because there were no pictures yet. But uh, uh, I have like an engraving of him, which is very nice. What I'll bring next lecture. Um, what did Euler do? He was a mathematician. He had to work hard for his living. Uh, he, he went early blind on one eye and then almost on two eyes, but he still continued work. How did he do that? He had two assistants, one reader and one writer. So uh, one was reading to him and he was talking to the other to write things down. Yeah, super cool. Well, how did it go? Euler knew, of course, about Newton. Um, and then he got an assignment from the Bernoulli brothers. Now, everybody knows the Bernoulli brothers because uh, it's a, it's a very mathematical family with a lot of m males. I don't, there should have been female Bernoullis, but for s they were not allowed to go to university, so that was really uh, yeah, wasted uh, uh, intellect, unfortunately. But so the Bernoulli brothers were um, in all kinds of sciences, and one of the Bernoullis got an assignment to, to look at ship motions. Yeah, that was important. A and, and a ship, if, if you have a ship, what motions do it has? Well, the thing you get sick of is, is not uh, the, the heave, and it's not the surge, and it's not uh, uh, the, the, the sway, but it's, uh, it's the roll. The roll and the pitch that's, that makes you sick. And, and if you then look at a point mass, th there is no roll or pitch. I mean, it's a, an object which has a, a position in space, x, y, z, so there is no thing like orientation. Or in other words, uh, we have to make a step further, and we have to say, oh, a ship is like a rigid body. It's, it's a, a thing with an extent. So not the mass is not concentrated in one point, but it has an extension. So Euler started with the idea of rigid bodies. Oh yeah, wh uh, why the Bernoullis? Well, the Bernoullis had to solve this, this problem of, of ship motion, but th they were smart, but not smart enough. So they needed a smart guy like Euler, who said, well, actually, uh, I have these, these laws of Newton, and now when I look at the ship or at, at a rigid body, I can, I can write formulas such that every part in the body stays at a constant distance. And that is my definition of rigid. And with that definition, I can write down formulas which show the motion of such a rigid body. Now, what are, the what are these motions? Suddenly, when you have a, a, a certain extent, you also have orientation, right? Yeah? I have an extent, so I also have not only a place in the lecture room, but also an orientation. So, uh, and if we, if we restrict ourselves to, to two-dimensional, then there's only one angle, right? because we have the, this coordinate system with an x and a y, and then all the rotations are about the z-axis, eh? which goes out of the paper. So this is the rotation about the z-axis. So suddenly we have to, to show where the body is. We not only have to say, well, it has these coordinates, x and y, but it also has an orientation, eh? like this. Oops. Yeah, pretty cool. Okay, though. So um, with that, of course, now you have to come up with an equation of motion, uh, not e motion, but equation of motion for the for the rigid body. Now, what is the equation of motion? 
you can easily derive that from Newton because you know what the equation of motion is for a point mass and a rigid body is just a sum of point masses so you write the sum uh, the integral sign which is an s actually sum so the sum of all that part and if you do that then you can extract from your equation force is mass times acceleration something like torque and then a acceleration independent term uh, called mass moment of inertia and then something with acceleration and we get the following Euler equation the sum of the torques uh, is equal to the mass moment of inertia times the angular uh, angular uh, acceleration and, and what is this mass moment of inertia? As I said, it's of course a sum and it's at the center of mass eh, here. Uh, and it's just the sum of all these uh, mass parts times the distance with respect to the cm squared that is actually the definition so take every point mass in, add it then up that is the thing. So uh, now let's do a very simple one. Uh, let's do a dumbbell. So we have uh, two masses, and for simplicity, let's call them M. And uh, they are at the distance R, and uh, this is nicely the center. So apparently, this is also the center of mass here. Then uh, what would be the uh, the mass moment of inertia at the center of mass? Well. Like, like mass and mass moment, it's just a sum. So I take the first mass and times the distance squared plus the second mass here times the distance squared. So apparently this is 2mr squared. Super simple. So summing up for our two-dimensional case, now if we have the following thing, we have a coordinate system with uh, coordinates and orientation. Yeah, sometimes we write it like this nice NF inertial system and the angles go like this then uh, we have some rigid body on the rigid body we have the center of mass identified we had a a marker on the body which which showed like the initial angle so there there is like an orientation yeah, with respect to the uh, the x-axis the horizontal one then there are quantities like mass and mass moment of inertia which yeah uh, des describe uh, the behavior of the body, and then we have a number of forces, F1, F2, etc. And then for such a system, we can write down eh, the equations of motion, equations of motion. And of course, the first part is uh, the Newton part, the sum of the forces in the two directions, or oh, it should be capital in this case. Sum of the forces, eh, it's in two directions, um, equals the mass times uh, the acceleration uh, where this yeah now I get very sloppy where this vector x is x and y uh, so this is the Newton part and then for the Euler part we have the sum of the torques uh, yeah you could say about the cm is the mass moment of inertia about cm times the angular acceleration that is Euler and this is actually everything you need well, almost everything. There's also one little instrument we will need. Um, <coughs> and so th these are, eh, for this rigid body, these are the equations of motion. There's also another little instrument which we'll need, but um, let's talk uh, about that after the break. Ja, koffiebreek.